Hello everyone, it's a new school year and we have finally arrived at our very first test of the year. And here we start with the fundamentals of physics unit test. If you take a look at your practice test, here is a list of the topics that will be covered on this exam. Number one, the fundamental unit of distance in the SI system is... Alright, this is pretty easy. Let's knock off those that are not in the SI system. Mile and cubit. We're left with centimeters, meters, and kilometers. If you think about the units we usually measure distance with, that's pretty much meters. Next, we have the length of a dollar bill. Okay. What is our typical strategy when approaching these problems? Let's convert them to something we know. I kind of wish I put more spacing on this paper. Oh, well, I've got to use the side. All right, so here we're going to have the workspace for number two, for choice A. That is equal to 0 0.015 meters. With me so far? Choice B, 0 0.15 meters. Choice C is 15 meters. And choice D, Ooh, that's big, 150 meters. So out of these choices, we got to pick whichever one is closest to the length of a dollar bill, and that is choice B. Next, number three, what is the approximate width of a person's little finger, a.k.a. the pinky, if you did not know that? So let's take a look at your own pinky, and let's approximate that width. One meter is too big. Point one meter, that's about 10 centimeters. Still too big. Point oh one meter, that's one centimeter. We'll keep that in touch. And then this point oh one oh oh one meter is one millimeter. I think the closest here would be that one centimeter value choice C. Number four, how long will it take an object to move 100 meters if the object is traveling with an average speed of 0.5 meters per second. Let's highlight some things here. To move 100 meters, ooh, let's take out that color. Let's make something nicer. One hundred meters is our distance. Oof. Okay. With an average speed of point five meters per second. So that's our V. We're looking for our time. So V is equal to D over T, speed is equal to distance over time, plug and chug, 0.5 meters per second is equal to 100 meters over T, solve for T, you get 100 divided by 0.5 and that is equal to 200 seconds. Check yourself, if you plug the solution back in, you should still get the same numbers. Number five, oops, there we go. What is the average velocity of a car that travels 30 point kilometers due west in 0.5 hours? Let's highlight, here we got our distance and our time. Got a D and a T and we're looking for our average velocity, so that's a V. Okay, same formula, plug and chug. This time we're solving for V. 30 kilometers for D and 0.5 hours for T. That should get you 60 kilometers per hour. Now, what direction are we going? We're going west. 60 kilometers per hour west, that's choice D. Number six, 
An object accelerates uniformly from 3 meters per second to 8 meters per second east in 2 seconds. What is the magnitude of the acceleration of the object? Okay, so they gave us an initial velocity of 3 meters per second. We reach a final velocity of 8 meters per second, and we have a time of 2 seconds with an unknown acceleration. Remember, acceleration is the change in velocity over time, Vf minus Vi, if you expand that over time. 8 meters per second minus 3 meters per second over 2 seconds equals 5 over 2. A is equal to 2.5 meters per second. I hope I did not go too fast. X number seven, a child is riding a bicycle at 15 meters per second. That's our initial velocity. And then it starts to accelerate at a negative 3.0 meters per second squared for four seconds. What is the child's speed at the end of this four second interval? Okay, for number seven, oopsies. Gave us initial velocity of 15 meters per second, an acceleration of negative 3 meters per second squared. That negative is important. 4.0 seconds is our time, and we're looking for Vf. Same formula, plug and chug. Over t, we get negative 3 meters per second squared is equal to Vf minus 15 meters per second over 4.0 seconds. We get negative 12 is equal to Vf minus 15. We get Vf is equal to positive 3 meters per second. Choice C. Excellent. A. Number 8. Here we got a distance versus time graph. Sorry, displacement versus time graph. And here we're going to solve questions 8 through 10 with this graph. Number 8. What is the average speed of the object during the first two seconds? Let's look here. How do you find speed on this type of graph? You use the slope formula. So slope, change in y over change in x. So let's pick out our y coordinates, 8 and 0. x coordinates, 2 and 0. It's 4 meters per second. Makes sense? Yes, it does. Number 9. What is the magnitude of the object's total displacement after 8 seconds? Where does it end up? Right here. 0 meters is our displacement. Back where it started. Number 10. Let's do purple this time. What is the average speed during the first four seconds? Okay. This one could be a little tricky, but it's not too difficult once we understand. So during the first four seconds. Okay, our total distance that we covered is eight meters over four seconds. This is equal to 2 meters per second is our average speed. And if you do the slope formula for that purple line, you get the same thing. 8 minus 0 over 4 minus 0. 8 over 4 is 2 meters per second. So number 11, I'm going to treat this differently. So I just want you guys to figure out what these two components equate, equate to in terms of a single vector. So what does these two vectors equal? That should be choice A, going this way. But what the question is actually asking for is which vector represents the force that will produce equilibrium with these two forces? So that's the same as what will make this cancel out. And if you think about it, that'll be choice C. But for our purpose here of understanding vectors and their components, let's go with choice A. Number 12. Scalar is the vector as what is to what? Speed is to velocity. Already, choice A. 
S and S, V and V. But let's look at the other choices. Displacement is the distance. Here the order matters, so displacement is the vector and distance is a scalar, so that's not correct. Speed and distance are both scalars. Displacement and velocity are both vectors, and the only one that matches is choice A. Number 13, which is a vector quantity? Speed's a scalar. Work is energy, that's a scalar. Mass is a scalar. That's just displacement. Number 14, which term identifies a scalar quantity? Displacement's a vector. Force is a vector. Velocity is a vector. Time is our scalar. Ah, the voice, guys. Number 15, the components of a 15 meter per second velocity at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal are, okay, vector components. Horizontal is our x. We take our vector a, multiply by the cosine of the theta. So in this case, our vector is 15 meters per second times the cosine of our angle, 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. That should give you 7.5 meters per second for our x component. Now for the vertical component, that is y. Multiply that vector by the sine of the theta, so it's 15 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees. 15 times about 0.86666 repeating-ish, and that should give you approximately 13 meters per second. The ones that match this up is choice B. Be careful, it is not choice A, it's the reverse. Number 16, same spiel. We're looking this time for the horizontal component. So that is AX. A cosine theta. 10 meters per second is our vector. Times the cosine of 30 degrees. That should give us close to 8.7 meters per second. Now, if they ask you to show work, this is how I want you to show it. The three-step method. Equation, right here. Substitution with units. The degree sign is indeed a unit. Then you state your answer with units. That is the three-step method if I ever ask you to show work. All right, now we're on to the short response section. Number 17, determine the magnitude of the hiker's results in displacement if you walk 2 kilometers east and 1.4 kilometers north. So how do we find that? Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So a squared plus b squared equals a squared. a squared is 2.0 kilometers squared plus 1.4 kilometers squared equals c squared oops 1.96 equals c squared that's 5.96 our resultant displacement should be 5.96 what squared of that is Approximately 2.44 kilometers. Cannot leave those numbers naked, guys. So that there is our results in displacement. Now, if you check, take a look at this diagram, we got to draw the vector. So from the starting point, going all the way to the end point. Make sure you use a straight edge. And just like that. Make sure you draw that vector arrowhead. Okay, good. Next, we got ourselves a velocity versus time graph. Okay. Number 19, identify the physical quantity represented by the shade area on the graph. I know I didn't get to through this topic yet, but this is all you need to know so far. Okay, in the shaded area of the graph, this is what we call taking the area under the curve. So you're, taking, you're multiplying our velocity times our time, and what does that get you? It's 
So let's take a look at the formula for velocity. When you multiply these two values together, V times T equals displacement or distance. So either one is good. Number 20, determine the magnitude of the car's acceleration to the first six seconds. So what they just want us to do is to use the slope formula. If you think back to displacement versus time graphs, finding the slope gives us the velocity. But on this type of graph, this will give us the acceleration this time. Okay. So change in y over change in x. Change in y is 15 minus 0 over 6 minus 0. 15 divided by 6 is about 5 over 2. That is 2.5 meters per second squared. Number 21. Determine the magnitude of the average velocity from 6 seconds to 10 seconds. So that means this part here. Did our velocity change at all? Nope, it stayed at 15. So just 15 meters per second is our answer. Okay, now we've arrived at the last page. Here we have a ticker tape of the spot timer. Now we got to mark at least, oops, mark at least four dots to indicate the position of a car traveling at a constant velocity. So what does that mean? Constant velocity? Evenly spaced dots. So one, two, three, four, and you can keep going to make it five, and that's just about evenly spaced. There, that's it. And the last one is number 23. Got to calculate for the magnitude of the component of the 60 newton force that is parallel to the horizontal surface. So that means our horizontal component AX. Okay, our vector here is 60 newtons. Our angle is 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 times 60 degrees should equal approximately 51.96 newtons. If you want, you could round that to 52 newtons. Either is okay. And that is it. I hope it wasn't too hard. If you have any questions or any suggestions on how I can improve my video reviews for the future, please leave a comment or you can just tell me in person in class. Okay. So best of luck and don't study too hard, guys.